sorry, I don't have the slides open on the right slide. There we go. Okay. So I think you have a blank worksheet, like 7A. Does that seem right? Okay. I don't have good notes for this and I apologize. So I'm just gonna have you take down a few notes and some of you may not need to write any of this down. It may all be familiar, but um, measures of central tendency are what's called a way, is a way of describing or measuring the center or middle of the data, okay? So there are three measures of central tendency that we will talk about briefly for one of them, but um, the first one is the mean, okay? The mean is what we call the average. Oh, I don't want to write with a highlighter. Sorry, guys. Let's get a pen. There we go. The mean is what we just call the average, okay? The symbol on our calculator is going to be this X with a bar over the top, okay? And it is where we add everything and then we divide by the number of items. And you know, if, if you understand what average means, you don't have to write that. I don't care. It's your notes. Questions about that part? You know how to find an average? If you're doing it on your calculator by hand, you got to make sure you hit the total before you divide, right? So it doesn't divide just the last number. Okay. Anybody know median? Median, it isn't. It, 7A is blank. So if you need to write any of this down, that's where I would suggest, okay? Median is the middle, okay? It is the middle of a list of numbers, but it doesn't have to necessarily be the middle number because if there's an even number of items, you average the two in the middle to find that middle value, okay? And it means there's 50% above and 50% below. So let me just do this real fast. If we had two, three, five, uh, seven, eight, and 11, the middle is somewhere in here, right? So you would take five and seven, add them together and divide by two, and you would get six. So the median would be six, even though six wasn't one of the numbers. Does that make sense? If the list was two, three, five, nine, eleven, five would be the middle, because it's right smack dab in the middle when you put them in order. Any questions about those? Okay. Mode honestly isn't on the quiz and we don't talk a lot about mode. It has various uses that it's good for, but mode is the most often occurring number or most repeated number. There can be more than one mode or no mode. So if you had a list like one, two, three, there's no mode, nothing repeats, okay? Um, there can be one mode or there can be more than one. For example, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, eleven. Eight and nine are modes. Make sense? I'm not going to ask you about the mode on the quiz. Anybody need an example of any of the rest of that? Anybody? 
pretty good. Okay, then we have what are called measures of variation. And I, I wouldn't write a whole bunch of this down. Um, you, standard deviation is what we're going to be looking at. Okay, and this is the symbol for standard deviation. I wouldn't write all this down. It's just... Um, It's a measure of dispersion or how spread out the data is, okay? Standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the data is. And then you might put this down. Okay, a lower standard deviation means the values are closer together and a higher standard deviation means the values are more spread out. Now, there are two standard deviations that are going to show up on your calculator. Maybe we'll just wait till we see that on the calculator. If you take AP stats or even Probin stats, you'll get into way more about all this. But for this week, we're just going to stick with some pretty basic calculator work. A couple of you are in AP Stats. Do you have to know these formulas? Do you have to be able to do those without the calculator? Standard deviation, do you know? No, not one you have to do without the calculator as far as you know. It's very interesting how it's derived, but I just don't want to spend a lot of time on it today. We good? All right, so I'm going to show you how to do stuff on the calculator. Um, if you grab your calculator, and do you remember how to put a list in? I'm going to put a list up on the screen in a minute, but do you remember how to get there? It's just the stat button. Does everybody have a calculator? Need me to wait? Okay, stat and then enter, and we're gonna put a list in. We're gonna put some numbers into list one. Now, let me put them up here. Um, yeah, these are the ones I wanna do. And let me see if I can make them bigger. Can you see them okay? I can read them. 58, 53, 59, 51, 46, 35, 51, 58, and 60. Okay? And then this is the new stuff, okay? Now we are going to go to stat again, and we're going to go over to calculate, and we are going to do the one variable stats, meaning everything you can tell us about one list of numbers. Okay, so it was stat, right arrow over to calculate, and then choice one. Now, on my calculator, it asks me what list I want to use. If you have an older calculator, it'll just assume you're using list one. If you're not, you'll have to tell it. Frequency list, you want to have blank. Don't make sure it doesn't have anything in frequency list. And then go to calculate. All right, how did we do? Anybody not getting those numbers? Antoine, did you get the list put in? You good? All right, so what is this X with a bar? It's called X bar. What does that mean again? It's the mean, okay? So when it asks you the mean, you have to know that that's the symbol. The second thing up here is the sum of all the numbers, okay? This little sigma means the sum. This is the sum of the square of the numbers. This is the sample standard deviation and the population standard deviation. Am I doing that right? Those of you who are in AP stats, yes. The S is the sample one, right? And the population standard deviation. Um, on the quiz, 
I specifically wrote either SX or what is this called? Sigma X? No, this is a, anyway, I put, I put the exact symbol so you weren't confused which standard deviation it wanted, okay? N is the number of items. You should always check, was there nine things? Did we put in the right number of items? Because otherwise you could be messed up. And then do you see this little arrow here, guys? This means that there's more things if you scroll down. And we are going to eventually need all of these when we go to do a box plot. We have the minimum value was 35. There was 25% of the data was below 48.5. The median is the middle, which we were looking for, 53. Third quartile or 75th percentiles at 58.5 and the max was 60. All right, so someone remind me what I just said so I can write these in here. Was 52.3 for this one? And then you don't have this, I'm sorry, but all right. 53 and the mode. There is a way to have your calculator sort the numbers. I'm not going to ask you mode on a quiz anyway, but does anybody remember what we put in more than once? If I go back to the list up here was 58 the only one that was repeated no there's two 51s too 51 and 58 maybe i'm not going to ask you anyway but all right questions if you can't find something on the calculator go to the notes in classroom because this is where i have all this information okay um if you do we need to do one more or you got this we're going to do some on a sample anyway in a minute but if you went stat enter and entered all these in can anybody help me what is the mean for this list can you just look up there and tell me what it says the mean is the mean is 19 okay the median is that up there somewhere Median is 20, okay? And I don't really care about the mode. But do you understand where all that came from? You know how to get that on the calculator? Do you want to practice one more time? I think we're going to practice with some shorter lists in a minute if you just... All right, I know in Delta Math, it asks some questions about what all these mean, okay? So I'm going to go through this. If you want to write down some of these symbols, you may have already written this down. Oops, oops, oops. This X with the bar is the mean. That's the symbol, okay? This is the sum of all the numbers. This is the sample standard deviation. If the numbers we put in were considered a sample, then this would be the standard deviation. If they were considered a population, and all, the, all of the values, the population standard deviation is this symbol. Again, on the quiz, I gave you the exact symbol, so you just have to know how to type it in and copy it down. N is the number of items that you put in in your list. Do I need to explain what the minimum is? Okay, this is the 25th percentile or Q1 is the quartile. So it means 25% of the data are between 153 and 199. This is the median. So another 25% of the data points or the values are between Q1 and the median, 25% are between the median and Q3, so this is the 75th percentile, and then the maximum between Q3 and there is the last 25%. All right, I do have two vocabulary things you need to know, and this one is on the quiz, range. This is different than we did domain and range. This is simply the max minus the min. So the range of values here would be 292 minus 
153. Oh, that hurts my head. One thirty nine. But if I ask you the range on a quiz, it's just the max minus the min. Does that seem okay? All right, the interquartile range, actually, don't think I put it on the quiz, but the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so for this one, it would be 253 minus 199, which I think is. What, 54? All right. The interquartile range helps decide whether there's outliers. And we're going to talk a little bit about outliers, but I didn't put it on the quiz. Okay. This is our goal today, is to be able to do some box plot stuff. Have you seen these before, guys? How many of you feel like you've seen these before? Not everybody, some of you? Okay. Okay. The idea is there's going to be some kind of a scale next to it, and it's going to show you, you're going to graph the minimum Q1, the median Q3, and the max, okay? The length of the whole box is called the interquartile range. A box plots divide the data into sections that each contain about 25% of the data in the set, all right? So here's an example you don't have, but just pay attention. It's not tricky at all. What is the median? Did anybody catch where the median was? How do you find the median on a box plot? This is the median right smack in the middle of the box. So the median for this set is 55. Everybody with me here? Seem okay? The lower quartile, okay, that's Q1 is here and it's at 53. The upper quartile is here, and it's at 56. The minimum value is at the bottom. We're going to do an example in your notes in a second, but uh, it's at 52. The maximum value is over here. looks like 58.2 maybe. The range would be the max minus the min, so 58.2 minus 52 would be 6.2. Uh, is there more? Okay, apparently that's all the questions I had on that one. I thought there was more questions. All right, we're going to go to 9A, and we're actually going to do one of these and answer some questions, so you'll have stuff in your notes, okay? Can you go to 9A and put these numbers in list one? I think I have mine in list three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven numbers, I think. So when you have them entered, help yourself. It, it'll say at the bottom, mine looks is looking for 12, but it, that means there's 11 of them already entered, okay? That's what that 12 right there, okay? So then you're going to go stat, right arrow, one variable stats. Now, I put mine in list three, so I have to change this. If you have an older calculator, you just hit enter as long as you put them in list one. Again, make sure there's no frequency list. Is this what yours looks like? Okay. So we're going to write down some numbers to answer these questions. What is N? What does N mean and what was it, guys? Yep, number of items and it was 11, right? 
What was the mean of the test scores? These were, I forgot, Mrs. Williams algebra class test scores. Okay, so we got that the mean was 75.5 roughly. And the symbol for that was the X bar. Okay, the mode, uh, anybody pay attention as you were typing them in? Was it 80 maybe? There was four 80s, right? Feels like it had to be 80. Well, I don't know what I just did. Okay, the median um, was 80 as well. Okay, the lower extreme or minimum test score. Anybody tell me so I don't have to keep flipping back and forth? The median, when we put it in, you do have to scroll down on the calculator screen. That's a good question. I forgot. Scroll down, and then it lists. This is what's called the five number summary, and we're going to need that to make our box plot, this last little bit right here. Okay? Thank you for asking, because I forgot to point out. Again, they had to scroll down. Okay. So someone tell me, what was the min? 70. Thirty. Okay, so someone had a thirty. Um, the max, one hundred. So the range would be one hundred minus thirty or seventy. And then it asks for Q one and Q three, which were what seventy and eighty five. Do I have those right? Okay. And the interquartile range would be the difference between those. So it would be eighty five minus seventy is 15. Okay, now we're going to talk about outliers briefly. Um, the interquartile range, what did I just write down? 15? Is that right? Okay, so find the smallest grade possible while not being an outlier. Well, the rule is you take the median minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So the median was what? 70? What was the median, guys? 80? Okay, so we're going to do 80 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, which was 15. And then we're going to do 80 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, which was 15. Okay, 80 minus 1.5 times 15 is 57.5. And then we're going to do 80 plus 1.5 times 15 is 102.5. Okay, so are there any outliers? Well, I got to go back over what that meant. The smallest possible, while well, not being an outlier, we said was 57.5. Were there any scores below 57.5? Yes, right? That 30? Is that the only one? Was 30 the only one below 57.5, guys? Okay. Were there any above, what does this say? Are there any, oh, anything above 102.5 would also be an outlier, but we said there weren't any on that end, right? 100 was the highest. Okay. What percent of students scored above 85? Can we tell that? Well, 85 was the upper quartile. What does that mean? upper fourth so what percent scored above 85 25 percent how many students actually scored above 85 well how many were there that you'd have to just look at the list if there was 11 25 percent of 11 two or three was it two um i wouldn't ask that question yeah I gave you nice even, I did ask something kind of similar on the quiz, but I gave you like an even number. So we'll say there's um, 12 people who took the test. So the upper fourth would be three people because it would be a fourth of 12. Does that make sense? I tried to make it come out nice. I don't want it to be confusing. All right, we're going to plot. This is, we're going to actually draw our box plot for this. All right, on a quiz, I would not 
necessarily give you one that had an outlier, but 30 was an outlier, so I'm going to actually put a star at 30. What was the next highest value at, above 30, guys? 70? 60. Okay, so normally the whisker would go all the way down here, but because we threw out an outlier, it's going to start at 60. That's our new kind of min, okay, because we threw out the outlier. We'll talk more about these in a second. Then what's what was the median, or the Q1, sorry? 70 is Q1. All right, that's the start of our box, and that goes to the median, which is 80. And then it goes to Q3, which is 85. And then the whisker goes out to the max, which is 100. This is not really the min, but we had an outlier. Okay. Let me give you some questions that I would ask on a quiz. Um, true or false? 25% uh, of the people scored between 80 and 85, according to just this. If I didn't give you the numbers, I just gave you this picture. Did 25% of the people score between 80 and 85, according to that? Yes, because the box, each half of the box is 25%. Everybody okay? All right. 75% uh, of the people scored below 85. True or false? True. All right. Now, this is the question that gets students. There are more people represented between more people scored between 70 and 80 than scored between 80 and 85. No. I need you to understand this. The box has two different sides that are not the same size, but they both represent 25% of the students. The difference is the 25% between 80 and 85 scored very close together, okay? The people between 80 and 70, there's still a fourth of the class in there, but their scores were just more spread out, okay? All right, um, we're gonna do a little comparison here quick between these box plots. There's one here and another one. Do you have this? I thought you had this. Do you not have this? No? Okay, then maybe we'll skip it. Um, yeah, I'm not feeling it. Let's go to the back side real quick. All right, 9B. In Bramley's shop, there are six types of phone cases for iPhone 8. The price of each is shown. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of these prices. So can you do that real quick? Do you remember how to clear out a list real easily? Stat, enter, if you go to the title, and then you can uh, hit clear, enter when you're up on the title. You don't want to delete, though. I think I already did these in my regular calculator. If anybody's having trouble, let me know because you have to be able to do this. Anybody find a mean of those? I got 22.5 as well. And standard deviation, um, I'm going to go with this one is 
four, I would tell you which standard deviation I wanted, okay? But we're gonna call this a sample because it's not every phone case sold. So in the same shop, the prices of the Galaxy phone cases has a mean of 22.5 and a standard deviation of 2.3. Compare the two sets of data making particular reference to the spread of the prices. Okay, so the mean is the same, right? So the average price of both, what is it, iPhone and Galaxy? Cases are the same. Okay, the average price of both is the same. But what does it mean that the standard deviation for the iPhones was 5.4 and the standard deviations for the uh, Galaxy was 2.3? Come on, AP Stats people, tell me something. Yes, the Galaxy prices, Galaxy cases were much closer in price, right? They were all closer together because there's only a standard deviation of 2.3. And you don't have to write it all if you don't want, but I'm just iPhone more spread out. Okay, that's all we're going to go with for today for that question. All right, now example two says the average cost of 10 types of headphones is $15. The average cost of eight, the mean cost of 10 types of headphones is 15. The average cost of eight different headphones is 88. What is the mean cost for all 18? Okay, this could be an SAT question. So they found 10 headphones and they averaged them out to be $15. What does that mean the total was when they added up those 10 numbers? Okay, there was 10 numbers. They averaged out to be 15. There was a total. So the total had to be 150, everybody good? And then there was a second set. There was eight headphones, and they averaged $88. Oh, okay, those are the nice ones. Um, so how could we find the total for those? 88 times eight, can someone do that? How much did you get? 704. So now if we wanted to average all 18 of them, what would we do? Yep, add these two numbers together. Good job. 704 and 150 would be 854. And there's now eight of them, 18 of them we're averaging. I got 47.44. Now, could most of you have logic through that? Okay, if you know there's 10 of them and the average is 15, well, before you divided, it must have been 150, okay, et cetera. All right. Let's look at these. Uh, no, I don't want to skip that one. Mean and standard deviation again. Skip that one. Let's look at number three. The average height of 10 students is 56. The average height of a group including 15 students in addition to the original 10 is 60. What? What is the mean height of the additional 15 students? Okay, this is kind of working backwards. Uh, I'm going to skip that one too. I can do it, but I just I don't think you're going to get one like that. 
The average grade in a chemistry class of 10 students was 75. The average score of the same students in math and chemistry combined was 82. What is the mean average of the students in math? All right, let's, you don't have this number four? Okay, let's do this one real quick. The average of 10 students in chemistry was 75. So their chemistry grades total what? 10 students, average 75, so that would be 750 for all their chemistry scores totaled. The average score of the same students in math and chemistry was 82. So we took the total from chem, added the total from math, which we don't know, and then we divided by how many students altogether? Okay, and it came out 82. So can we work this backwards? What would we do first? Well, their total points for math and chem would be 820, right? If we did 10 times 82. So 750 plus their math average gave us 820, which is how much? That's their total, though? I'm really confused. What is the mean average? Did I do something wrong? So that's... But that's their total points, isn't it, for math? The average grade in chemistry class of 10 students was 75. The average score of the same students in math and chemistry was 82. So I guess it's 20 grades. I'm going to not use this video. <laughs> I think 20 grades. So what's 82 times 20, guys? 1640. And then if we subtract the 750, what do you get? Eight ninety, and that's the ten students average in math. So then, if we divide by ten, eighty nine was their math average. Okay, that was disgusting. I'm not using that question or this video. All right, let's just stop and um, just for the sake of you guys, let me.